bio. Uh, Gerald is a UI UX design fellow at Medeva Labs. Uh, before that, he was working in cybersecurity and forensics at KCP, KCB Bank. And then before that, he was a technical support intern at Kenya Reassurance Corporation. And he's really been in different industries doing different things. And I think we'll let him tell us if he's now in UI UX design or still looking for different opportunities and different career paths. So simply, how do you leverage the opportunities online that are there online to build yourself in whatever form you decide to take in the technology space? So I'll go ahead and give Gerald the space now to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hope. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's a very lovely introduction. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'd love to know first if I'm audible enough. Can everyone hear me? Can you uh, type a, like, can you can just comment or react to the thumbs up if I'm audible enough? Okay, nice, nice. Um, so uh, I'm going to share my camera, my screen so that you can all see me. Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is that's, this is me. So uh, my name is Gerald Wano. As uh, I said, um, currently I am a UI UX, uh, I'm a design fellow uh, actively in the UI UX design field. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that I can have a brief introduction of myself and then we can continue with the session. Uh, okay, just a minute. Just a minute. And I see your hand is up. Is that a question already? <laughs> okay. Just a minute. Hold. Just give me a minute. Just two minutes. Uh, I'm sorting my technical issue. And no problem. Um, that's fine. Um, can everyone see my screen? Hello? Uh, yes. yes, we can, Gerald. If you could just zoom in. How about now? It's taking a moment to load from my end. Someone else can comment if they can already see. Should be up now. It's also loading. It's loading. Yeah, it's also loading on my end. It's loading on my end. Okay. Show my you. hand. You good? Yes, yes. Okay, nice. So not, yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm on I'm on the not yet group. Okay. Oh. Yeah, not yet. Still loading. Okay, let me try. 
You can try sharing again. Okay, let me try doing that. Let me try one more time. How about now? Yeah, yeah, it's good. But uh, presentation mode. I don't know if it's just for me, but the moment you go on slideshow, it takes time to load. Um, yeah, yeah it goes on time to load. So can we just leave it at the normal board uh, just for the purpose of the sake of time? Yeah, that's, yes, that's uh, fair. That one work. Okay, so awesome. Um, so uh, from the brief introduction we have, we had uh, earlier on. So my name is Gerald. I'm a design fellow at Viva Labs. I've been here since late last year. Uh, before that, um, this is a brief history about myself and my career from when I was in campus, uh, from back in 2020. I started off as a front-end developer, um, life got a little bit frustrating, so then I moved into UI UX design, uh, did it for uh, as a freelancer on contract based for, for a company here in Nairobi. I worked on a couple of projects. Um, then moved after that uh, to finish my, because here I was still in uni, so I went uh, and became an intern at KCB Bank uh, in the forensics department and also for, let's say, a month in the cybersecurity department. Uh, and then I graduated then in 2023, no, in 20, late 2022, I decided I'm going to venture full, fully into design and into the creative space. So, um, I've been here as a design fellow here at Medeva. Medeva is a design collective. Uh, we are located in Kilimani. We are a design collective working across human-centered solutions across Africa. So basically projects in health, projects in, right now we have a project in e-mobility, uh, projects in the social impact space, that's what we do. So without further much ado, I'll go straight into uh, what brought, brings us to the topic of today. So allow me to give a highlight on the tech on the tech landscape, tech landscape uh, right now, globally and not only even in Kenya. So right now we are we're having a very very um, let me say it's not a, a very quick shifting uh, tech space. It's very rapid. Uh, there are a lot of advancements every day. There are a lot of trends, uh, which sometimes can be hard to keep up with, uh, because let's say for example. Um, AI, let's say, for example, AI in the past one year has done really amazing, uh, has scaled to high, heights which no one could imagine. Leave alone chat GPT and the power that it possesses. A lot of applications have incorporated AI into uh, their businesses. And let's say, it's, let's say, for example, something like LinkedIn, which writes for you automatic messages which you can send to recruiters. So you can just have a look at this and just see how much um, within one year technology can can move at a very rapid pace. Um, other things like uh, IoT, for example, the Internet of Things and the influence it has across millions of devices which are being manufactured daily um, and the interconnectivity between each. Um, you have IoT in uh, manufacturing and automation. You have it in um, healthcare and biotechnology. I mean, you can just see the potential that technology has and how wide it is and how it's impacting lives within a very short term and moving at a very fast pace. So with such um, increasing advancements in technology today, um, it's evident that there's a demand for professionals who are skilled enough to do uh, the job properly. Because let's say, for example, in AI, there are guys who are working on those language models, those natural language processing models. There are guys who are actively doing research um, so you see it creates demand for people who are skilled in this uh, in this area to showcase their talent and skills so that businesses can make money at the end of the day. So basically the technology landscape is very wide and I projecting it in my own personal view, projecting it to a couple, let's say 20, 20 30 years, it's going to be even tougher. It's going to move even uh, more rapidly and it's also still going to create more and more uh, demand for people who are uh, are skilled in uh, doing the job well. Um, so, with uh, with you understanding that 
uh, there are a lot of, uh, let's say, sections in technology, the cyber security, the AI, the mach machine learning, IoT, whatnot. Having it a little bit confusing might get you um, as an entry level or someone who, okay, as an entry level uh, enthusiast moving into a particular space in technology, or just trying to look at technology as a whole, it can uh, it can have you a bit confused. Let me say that. So. What do you do? Like, how do you decide which space you're supposed to venture? Let's say, for example, guys, all of most of you guys here in cybersecurity, cybersecurity, or I assume all of you are in cybersecurity. So, being it being confusing, how are you supposed to figure out a, a certain path that's a, uh, that's supposed to help you leverage opportunities in technology or in cybersecurity that you can get online? So, I think for me, um, the most important thing is to deploy strategic thinking. Uh, by strategic thinking, I mean having a clear plan with a start and a finish, uh, which is an end goal or an objective. Um, in between point A and B, you have various plans that are uh, various um, dynamics which you have set in place. Let's say you have decided to look for jobs on LinkedIn. If that doesn't work and it's not successful within the first one month, what do you do? What's the contingency plan? So that's part of strategic thinking putting an organized uh, or rather implementing an organized approach so that you can get to the desired opportunity that you desire, uh, the desired opportunity which you, you have been dreaming about. And also it's equally important for you to um, try and find your purpose. Um, I usually um, I usually think of purpose as this. Uh, I think I don't, I'm not sure if it's a very conventional way of thinking, but this works for me. So to find out if you have purpose in a particular field, or if you are you are here today, you have decided yes, I want to do cybersecurity. I haven't yet defined whether it's, I'm going to go into SOC, I'm going to go into uh, becoming a cyber uh, a cybersecurity analyst, um, I'm going to go into forensics. So for purpose, to figure out your purpose, it means that you have to know what drives you, uh, what helps you, what pushes you to wake up on a Monday morning after a happy weekend. So if you are doing it alone for the paycheck, if you are only there for the paycheck, if it's something that you're not feeling you're very passionate about, then I feel you have not yet found your purpose. Finding your purpose means you get satisfaction from the job that you're doing, from uh, the consistent practice, from what you've set your mind to do in technology. Purpose is finding out if really this is for you and and you feel you are thriving in that space. So a, a combination of strategic thinking and finding your purpose will eventually give you a, a, an edge uh, into leveraging careers in technology. Um, I usually have this one strategy that I borrowed from last year, where as part of still under part of, as part of strategic thinking, there is a site called Y Combinator and there's another site called Crunchbase. Uh, these two sites list all the tech startups and other companies which are on a global scale which are doing something in technology, either they're doing AI or something, but they have to be incorporating technology in their businesses. So um, what you do, you go to Y Combinator, you search for a company, and then you can, you, you can filter and see the, uh, if the company you desire to work with or to work in has got funding for the last one year. And if they collect information uh, and collect information on what they do, um, who they hire, such things can help you to uh, plot a strategic path towards getting to where you desire. Um, this strategy has worked for me in the past because I've looked at companies. Uh, it helps you to filter. It helps you to, to save even time. You don't have to um, just go blindly and look for a company and say, hey, these guys are doing uh, in, uh, in software development, these guys are in cybersecurity, let me just talk to them and see if they're going to give me a job. No, that's not how it works. You have to sit down. It's like a funnel. You start at the top, then you come narrowing down until you get to what you desire, until you get to the companies which you desire to work with. That's a bit more strategic. Um, also, uh, under strategic thinking, uh, this is what I've just explained about why combinator and crunch base. I term that as uh, looking at the market in general and finding opportunities with potential growth and community. Um, I've talked about uh, funding company looking for companies which have gotten funding for the past uh, for the last one year, which means continuity. 
and which you, and if it grows even from uh, a certain amount in the previous year to this year having a probably a higher amount or a different investor or a different angel investor investing more money, then it means that uh, people are seeing that company has continuity and there's growth for it. So I think this is a, a, a green flag for, for you as you're doing your analysis of the market, as you are doing, uh, as you are employing strategic thinking into finding that particular particular role which you are really interested about. Um, so you have, sorry, so you have found an opportunity which fits you at this point. You have deployed strategic thinking, you have found out your purpose, uh, you have done a market analysis, you have identified companies which uh, reflect growth and continuity and potential for you to um, gain, uh, gain an opportunity. So what next? There's a, pro a popular saying which uh, says, uh, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes be better than a master of one. I really like this quote because it means, it gives me, it, it helps me to think about myself as a person who is good, who can accommodate an extra skill, uh, as opposed to an extra skill, not what I do primarily, but something extra. There's a rule when in the uh, most workplaces where you get to work, uh, I think, 60% of your main job, what your role defines you to do 60%, no, it's 70, 80%, and then 20% you do uh, something which is totally different from what you do. Uh, it helps uh, with the daily operations and whatnot. But for, uh, what I'm trying to imply here is um, that there are shifts in technology. Right now, uh, with the fast growing, with the, with the high, uh, the rapid pace that technology is going, uh, is taking, is, 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 going with, there are a lot of shifts that happen. Uh, and as recently as last week, I, I'm not sure if most of you watch uh, or fo follow around the news, but there have been a couple of a th thousands of layoffs in the past like one year. As recent as last week, uh, Discord laid, uh, laid off around 170 people. So to some extent, this might be considered something of comp uh, a matter of competency. Let's say, for example, you aren't competent enough that you're in the, in the job that you're doing. Of course, when layoffs come, you are going to be among the guys that get laid off. Um, I'm equating this to people who focus primarily on perfecting one thing rather than being well aware of how that works, though it's not in my domain, but I know how it works. I can do the job when XYZ is not around. So the shifts in technology are pretty common uh, due to the advanced growth in technology. So maintaining flexibility is key to the, let's say for example, um, let's say for example, let me use an example of a developer. A developer might be using a particular stack for the development of, let's say, um, uh, let's say I, like a fintech application. Then, for example, um, in the next like two years, the company changes that stack, and then um, they don't use what he or he or she was used to uh, uh, creating uh, the uh, the products with. So this renders the person at the end of the day as someone who possibly will be laid off or, or someone who's not going to be working on the job. What if initially they took the time to learn? and to gain knowledge on some on, on this different stack. Uh, let's say like two, three things about it. It gives them a competitive edge over someone who does not. So maintaining flexibility is very important in technology due to the shift, um, due to the certain shifts uh, which are, are the in tech every now and then. So staying up to date also is very important. Um, what I do uh, is look at job descriptions. Let's say, for example, I'd want to move to a different company. I'd want to do, let's say, something like product design and move from UI UX design. Which, okay, they're a bit similar, but let's say I do want to refine my my skills and move like upscale to become a product designer. So what do I do? I just don't go blindly. I just don't go blindly. I'd look at job descriptions of that particular role which I'm interested in. Then I'd like make a Google sheet or like a note down on notebook and paper uh, on a notebook with my pen and I'd write uh, this role requires X Y Z. I've seen it in this job description. I've seen it in this other one. I've seen it in in this other one. So it means this is something that's a key requirement. It's a necessity. Something which is very very important. So 
looking at job descriptions for me has helped me to stay up to date with the required skills for a, a role which is which I desire. So I feel the same same thing can be replicated for anyone who's in any field looking for any opportunity in technology, be it cyber security, be it software development, be it design, name it, anything. So let's say, for example, you're in cyber security uh, and you see guys, you see uh, three, four job descriptions saying that um, the guys use CrowdStrike. And then you see another one that says they use a different alternative. Then you see another one that says we still use CrowdStrike. That gives you, um, it should spark in your mind eventually that what is this, uh, that I'm supposed to be, I'm, like, how can I know more about this? How can I, I how can I add this to my skill set? Okay. So staying up to date using JDs is the simplest of all tricks which you can use. They're like It's like the oldest trick in the book. Um, apart from that, you can also uh, probably watch tutorials on YouTube or look at uh, mock interviews on, on YouTube and, and see what, or even talk to guys who are already in those positions, which I'm going to get uh, to that uh, in my couple of, of next slides. So you can just talk to them and ask them, so um, what is what do you guys use at the moment? Uh, let's say for devs, which stack do you use at the moment? Um, which tools do you, as, do you use at the moment? How do you navigate from this to this in a certain situation? So staying up to date is really important and it helps you um, be on toes. It helps you become aware of conversations which are in the room. You don't want to just to be quiet when people are speaking and you have nothing to say. So I think staying up to date is really, really important. So now you know what to do. What next? Now is, it's the time you have the skill. Um, you have the skill. Uh, you have found your purpose. Um, you have figured out out of the like the whole haystack. You have figured out where you want to to be. What do you do next? Now it's time for you to get your hands dirty. Remember, you are trying to leverage. Uh, opportunities in technology and this is a very very as the name says technology is a very technical field uh it requires all hands on deck it requires you to be um very hands-on it requires you to be uh, very critical in thought it requires you to be someone who is really really perfected uh, at their skill so this being a very hands-on uh, uh industry um it is important for you to um maintain consistent practice. I think this doesn't only apply for cybersecurity, but it applies across uh, most, if not all, of the rules in technology, all the opportunities in technology. So how do you maintain consistent practice? I understand most of you or some of you might have uh, already gained skills, but remember that continuous learning is paramount. So as you embrace continuous learning and even relearning. This helps you to build consistent practice. So today, uh, you today you might decide, uh, you might even create a plan for the entire year. So by the end of the year, you say, I want to um, be very, very conversant with this tool. Um, or at the end of the month, I want to be very, very conversant with this tool. So what do you do? You employ a, a monthly or a weekly or a daily strategy that's going to have you check a box every day. Today, I did this. Um, one percent. I'm like, uh, like a step forward, uh, towards ach achieving my goal. I'm like one step forward towards reaching to where I desire to be. So consistent practice is coupled always with continuous learning. And you never, you never, no one knows everything. However, the number of experience you might have is it twenty years? Is it fifteen years? Is it twelve? Is it five? Is it two? There's something new that you can learn every every day, and you can learn from people who you don't expect. Um, even see people in senior position can learn something from people who are in junior position. So do not downgrade yourself. Um, equating the knowledge you have, the, equating like the knowledge you have to uh, nothing. You 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 might you will always encounter something that you never knew yesterday, which you can always learn. And also for the things that you knew and you feel like you are not um, properly like you are not properly skilled at it, you are not really good at it, but you desire and have the purpose to get uh, to be good at it. Remember to um, like relearn, continue relearning, relearn and relearn and relearn. So our uh, competition in technology uh, is quite big. And the only way you can stay up uh, in the game is by competence. And competence is built through practice. Let's say, for example, a company is hacked or 
a system has been breached. Or for example, it's easy to bypass uh, login credential using credentials using something like SQL, SQL injection or something, or brute forcing. Let's say someone doesn't know about this, and you are presented with the you are presented with the problem at hand. You are like, hey, so and so, James, hey, Mary, you are supposed to diagnose this. You are supposed to give us a way out of this. If you did not uh, become consistent in the practice that you're doing, because some such things require consistent practice. This is, sometimes the situations are different, and you need experience and practice. Uh, those couple of hours which have been practicing to do this, you need that so that you can be able to do the job. And by doing the job and accomplishing it successfully means that you're competent enough. And this is through practice. By this, you are able even to you are able to stay uh, on top. You're able to be to meet the competition that's there. So you've gotten your hands dirty. Um, you've fully immersed yourself in what you desire, where your purpose lies. So how do you, what, what's the next step? How, okay, you are a bit closer towards uh, getting that opportunity in technology. So what do you do next? Like what happens next? So there's one easy thing which I've come to learn the hard way. And for techies, it's usually something which most of the people battle. Um, it's building social capital. And by building social capital, um, you're able to access opportunities in technology through networking. Uh, this means finding common spaces, common rooms, uh, where people who you share the same interest or even purpose as you, as you are in. Um, most of the tech uh, techies, I don't know if it's a bias. I'm being biased, but uh, from most of the, most of the people I interacted with, I was starting off, especially after school, um, in these common spaces that we're talking about, which I'll highlight. Um, most of the people will not be confident enough to talk about it, to talk to someone, but will just hide and keep quiet. Just I've, I've written that quote down there. Are you confident enough to dare approach people? or are you just comfortable to sit in front of your computer? You might be pretty, pretty good. You might be pretty, pretty good. You are the hacker, you are <laughs> the guy there in a black hoodie sitting uh, in front of your computer. You can do wonders. You are a keyboard warrior. You can do wonders with your keyboard. You can do wonders with uh, the little that you have. Um, but are you confident enough to build, uh, to, build, uh, to build social capital? Are you confident enough to deploy social skills? Do you have the social skills that it takes? Because right now as we speak, you can source even online. A lot of people have gotten opportunities in technology uh, through, they have gotten opportunities in technology through um, common spaces, through reaching out to people, through referrals. You don't send us, someone doesn't send a CV, just believes in how um, and has seen you work and you also have the soft skills which are uh, very, very in demand uh, in, the, in, uh, in, the, in the tech space, because you need to talk to people. You need to speak to people. You need to relate. You need to talk to people. You need to relate. Um, Thank you. So as I was saying, um, you need to build that social capital as a techie, as someone in cyber security. Um, I learned this the hard way when back when I was in school because um, I attended one hackathon where um, the facilitator, really amazing guy, his name is Frederick Wahoba, he was insisting so much on um, building your social skills. It requires you to um, just be able to go in there to connect. Common spaces and rooms, uh, events, um, hackathons, uh, places where you find people, not only even in your classroom, uh, but in spaces where people are, you find this opportunity, you find people in the industry trying to open their doors to young people or people who are enthusiasts, people who want to um, scale up their, 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 their skill set, they want to acquire roles in, in cybersecurity. So building a social capital is really, really important. And there are a couple of ways which you can build your social capital through networking. And it only requires you to be confident enough to dare approach people. Don't be the quiet guy who sits behind a computer um, saying, yeah, I'm good at what I do at the end of the day. I get a paycheck. I get, I'll get a job because my skill is what determines 
um, whether I'll make the cut, if I'll make the cut, but be very careful because soft skills are as equally important. As you can see, this is a small image of me um, back then in last year. Um, I got this opportunity just through uh, embracing my soft skills. I won't say where, uh, but this was a really big highlight of my life last year, all thanks to uh, building social capital and daring to talk to someone. So how do you network? Um, there are a lot of communities, physical and online right now. Uh, these are great places where you can network and most importantly, find mentors. Um, mentors are people who hold your hand and tell you, don't go this way, I made a mistake. I was like you, I passed through this path. Don't do this, do this instead. You see, that's an advantage for you by daring to uh, connect, by daring to network. Um, communities provide uh, provide a lot of mentors, not even only for people, not only by mentors, I'm not speaking even about people who have been like 20 to 15 years uh, in the industry. I'm also speaking to someone who was there even before you, like two, three years. Um, someone who can tell you, I tried this, it failed, you can try this and I want to see you succeed. So that gives you a comp that gives you a leverage towards achieving that goal which you want to, and that's getting an opportunity in technology um, or in cybersecurity. So communities are spaces, let's say for example, um, let me mention some of the communities I know, I know there's GDG Nairobi, I know there's an Angular group, I know there's an AI, uh, AI group Kenya, I know there's a group of product designer, such and such. There are a lot of communities in Kenya right now. Another good example is hackathons, as I've earlier mentioned. These are for especially for guys in cybersecurity, these are really, 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 really great uh, opportunities for you to uh, really, really great spaces for you to get um, opportunities. This is where you network with people. This is where you interact with people. This is where your social skills, uh, your sorry, your um, soft skills, your social skills, and your 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 tech skills, your cybersecurity skills, when they uh, when they come together can really provide you with a competitive edge over any other person in the room. Um, also, workshops and sessions which are facilitator-led can really, really help you uh, to, um, uh, to get that opportunity which you desire. Facilitator-led sessions, for example, let's say it's it's a meet, it's on a weekend, uh, you guys have met as a cybersecurity, let's say your entire cohort, you have an online uh, physical session and then Questions are being asked by facilitators left, right, and center, and you are also asking questions. Do you dare to answer? Do you dare to lift your hand up? It's this such small things which really, really matter. Um, and it even spotlights you, and guys are like, huh, that guy is I from the from how he's talking, I can tell that this guy is good. I can tell that this guy has the, the social skills and the soft skills to um, be in a certain role, which we as a company have opened. Should we consider him? They reach out to him or her, and then Unaskia, that guy got an opportunity. I know of one lady who did the same same thing. Two, three hackathons, we've been together with her, and she eventually got a role at one of the uh, one big bank in Kenya. So um, these three hackathons, workshops, and facilitator led sessions, these are really, really great places where communities um, and mentors come together um, to provide um, a good space for um, guys in various uh, fields in technology to come together and possibly even start scouting for people who are going to get they're going to give roles. Um, such uh, spaces are mostly uh, packaged with opportunities for entry level applicants uh, and even professionals. Um, you there's there's a hackathon we once went um, and the CEO came and told us. Do your best here, and I quote: "You never know. Probably we are scouting for people who are for we are going to we are scouting for people who we are going to employ in the next one year." You see, for someone who didn't dare to go to such an event, um, just applying online or something leaves them, uh, they, they leaves them at uh, at a at a place where they are not able to leverage uh, the situation at hand so that they can get a, an opportunity in technology. Um, so. I'd really encourage all of us um, maximize on the communities. Do a lot of um, there's a there's a website called Eventbrite. You can see all the events which are in Nairobi, 
which are nearly across the country, which are tech, tech based and a lot more. You can try to sign up and look at the, the upcoming technology, uh, the upcoming events. Here to go, talk to one or two people. If you are shy, you can just decide to talk to one or two. Um, but trust me, as you move on, it gets easier. I mean, you're able to build your social skills, you're able to build um, conversation, and you're able to have solid conversation with people, you're able to create good rapports, which is something which is good. It's a comp uh, you have a competitive edge about someone who just keeps quiet. Um, tech community in Kenya over the past, let's say, I'd say like for the, since COVID, since after COVID, uh, Kenya has witnessed growth and a lot of growth in numbers. Um, these communities have said online and on-site serve a lot, they serve as um, gates for opportunities which you uh, as an entry level enthusiast or as a professional can use to um, get to that desired room, which you, that opportunity which you desire. You only require one thing, you just have to network, just dare, push yourself. If you can push yourself to transnight working on Kali and trying to hack your neighbor's password, then I believe you can also do the same same thing to push yourself and try to network and try to improve your social uh, your social capital. Mm -hmm. um, now you've networked, um, how, which other tools, apart from going to events and communities and hackathons, workshops and facilitator led sessions, how else can you network? So networking has been made really, really easy with platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, now X. Um, there's, however, a caveat, there's, there's a secret towards it, to getting uh, opportunities which are long-term, opportunities which are short-term, opportunities which are permanent, opportunities which are contract-based, or even internships. The secret is to be consistent uh, and building a solid brand. By building a solid brand, I mean, um, Someone post, let's say, like your favorite mentor, or your favorite, um, the person who we look up to in the cybersecurity space in Kenya or even worldwide. Um, he posts, he or she posts something on, let's say, something that happened this week. Just go there and comment. Do the same for other posts for other people, and then get noticed. Consistently build your name out there, and then you can even decide to do one blog post every week. I'm a one. Uh, two blog posts every week or every month. Talk about something which um, is in people's mouth. Let's say, for example, the impact of AI on security today. Write a blog post about it. Post it on LinkedIn. Post it on Twitter. You never know who's looking at your profile. You never know who's looking at you building your brand. So being consistent helps you to stay relevant. And also, uh, I feel like the algorithm on LinkedIn or even on Twitter works the same same way. Will keep you. Uh, will keep your posts relevant to the people who like your post, the people who see what you create. And once you post, it just comes and pops up at the top of their page. Just they scroll there, like, ah, I've seen this guy for. He's been doing. He or she has been doing some some good work. Uh, I can see they wrote a post about this. Mm, very knowledgeable. How about I look at? How about I look about? Uh, I look at, at at their profile. So they get a look at your profile, and then they see, ah, oh, this guy is doing good, he's in second year or third year in school, he's in fourth year. How about we reach out to him? Or we talk to one of our recruiters, they reach out to him or her, and then let's see if they can come for an interview or we can just assess his knowledge base. We have an open uh, entry level position. Can we consider this person? Let's see if they um, are up to the task. So you see, such a situation uh, comes out of being consistent, out of networking on these online platforms. And you never know, you never know what it's going to give back to. Probably it's even a position that's remote. Probably it's a, a visa sponsored uh, position. You are told, hey, we so saw you are good, or come for me, uh, we are going to have a, a like an interview with you. You go through your steps, your skills are good, your soft skills are good, and then eventually you get an offer, you relocate. So all this was just birthed by daring to network and building consistency and building a brand, trying to show the world who you are and what exactly you are passionate about. I've highlighted, I've put the word passionate in both because you can be consistent, you can build your brand, but you're faking it. You're not passionate about what you're doing. But just there you've seen the laws in cyber security pay like 80,000 USD to 100,000, 120 to 40. Like, hey, this is very, very interesting. I have to build consistency because I've seen guys do this, and you are told to do this. 
No, it doesn't happen like that. If you're not passionate about it, then you're not going to give your whole heart to doing uh, what you really desire. You get me? So I feel it's really, really important to, the, to, to be consistent um, in building your brand passionately. Um, as you speak out the message, as you talk, as you tell the world what exactly you do, what exactly are you passionate about, what exactly do you, um, how, how have you combined, like, seeing through your passion in technology and how you are, you are using that um, to leverage the opportunities. Because eventually recruiters, once they see this, once they see consistent posts, once they see well-branded personal profile, they'll be like, this is exactly what we are looking for. How about to reach out to this person? It has happened. It has happened to me like a couple of times where recruiters have looked at my LinkedIn profile and they're like, ah, they just reach out and say, hey, we have this role, we have this role, can you apply for it? It has happened. It's something that I'm telling you from real life experience. I'm not giving you stories here. So it works. You just have to dare to be consistent. You just have to dare to be uh, to network. So you can easily even find mentors. Uh, I think I've spoken about this. But there's a resource here. There's a site called ADP List uh, where mentors, it's a, ADP List is like a, a database of mentors. Let's say uh, you're, look, you're in cybersecurity, you're in software development, you're in design, you're, product, you're, you're in product management. ADP List can help you find mentors who can give you 15 to 30 minutes or even an hour of their time to speak online on questions which you'd love clarification on. I've done that for a couple of times and I've got really amazing feedback on things which I've been struggling with in my career. So this is an awesome resource. You don't, it's not, it's not a must to walk up to someone or even call them. On ADP list, it's very easy for you. Just log into the application, sign up, um, make sure you're very conscious of um, the meeting you set up. So because you log in into the app, you look for a mentor, you book a session with them, and you're supposed to show up for that session. If you don't show up for a couple of sessions, then they ban you from the application. So it's that serious. They are very serious on helping you find mentors who are going to help you um, scale up your career or get that opportunity to desire. So bookmark this site. It's called adplist.com. So now you've networked. Um, how do you prepare? How do you make sure um, that you can walk the talk? So you you've written blog posts, you've done 101 things on uh, LinkedIn and, and Twitter, you've, um, you've, uh, you've messaged recruiters directly, you've talked to them. So how do they know, how can they see, like what's the proof that they can see you've been doing something, uh, that you've been practicing, that you've been putting effort in what uh, you are passionate about. So, um, this is the stage where you showcase what you can do and that you can you showcase your skills you flex your muscles out there so you do this through your resumes through your cvs and in some rules or some particular opportunities a portfolio of projects that you have been doing in the past um probably you are there and you have been sending thousands and hundreds and hundreds of um, resumes out there and you're not getting even feedback you're not getting constructive feedback, you're not getting interviews. Um, could be that your resume is not ATS compliant, but ATS, ATS compliant resumes, uh, ATS stands for applicant tracking system. So it means that you have the keywords in your application, in your, in, in your resume that are a match to what's on the job description. Let's say for example, I have 10 cybersecurity rules. Cyber I have 10 cybersecurity rules which are different. There's a SOC analyst, SOC uh, one, there's a cybersecurity analyst, there's a risk and compliance and governance. There is a, you know, a plethora of um, rules which are there. I cannot use one resume to apply across all 10 rules. So I have to take time to fine tune each resume to highlight keyword, highlighting to have keywords and metrics that um, are similar to what is listed on uh, the job description. AI today has there's, there's a set called JobScan, and there are a couple others. There's Teal, there's uh, there's Teal, and there's a couple of websites that use AI 
to, to help you um, make your uh, resume ATS compliant. So you post, you take your resume, you copy it, you paste it there, and then you take the job, de job description, you post it there, and then you run it. So it gives you a score out of 100. So it tells you that if, if it finds that the keywords are not so similar to what is in the job description, then it tells you you are at, let's say, 40, 30% or a certain low figure. And then it tells you improve on this, this include this in your resume, include this, and then when you improve that, you get to get a higher score, and this improves your chances of getting uh, interviewed for that particular role. So it's very, very important. As much as you have the skill, this is what people, uh, because it's it's very different. Experiences vary with every person. There's someone who's going to get a job even before they finish school to referrals. There's someone who's going to wait for two years before they get a job and they've been fine tuning resumes and doing all that's required, but they still do not get that opportunity. But still, um, I think I've given, I've given opportunities in both scenarios uh, where you can leverage um, your chances and maximize on how you're going to get that role. If you feel that you are better at, at networking and you feel that you can, you can achieve a referral, well and good. You can do it through uh, building social capital. You can do it through reaching out to link, uh, recruiters on LinkedIn. But if you feel that you're also the guy who, though I highly discourage this, if you feel that you're the guy who does not have a really, really, really good social capital or you don't have the social skills or you're a bit shy or you feel talking to people is not my thing, that's a red flag, by the way. Make sure that you you are really good at making sure that your resumes are ATS compliant and that you can build um, a portfolio which showcases all your design, all your uh, your work. Uh, let's say you wrote a paper on or you publish an, published an article on a project you did, or you try to do something on Kali and then you documented the entire process, you can have this as a portfolio of the works that you've been doing. This is a very, very um, smart and strategic way to leverage the opportunities that I have listed. Um, so in summary, as I conclude, find your purpose and find the place where you can make impact the most. Um, looking at companies on Y Combinator, looking at companies on um, Crunch Basin, generally online. You just try to figure out your purpose and try to do a strategic analysis. Uh, just use strategic thinking to make sure you land at the place where you make most impact out of your own, um, out of the skills that you've amassed and out of purpose and passion. Number two, make sure you practice a lot. Uh, as Ali on mentioned, technology is a very, very practical space and you can be easily faced up by someone who outdoes you based on your skills. So skills and competence are built through practice and continuous and consistent learning and relearning. Third, make sure you network as much as pos possible and build your social capital. Um, I think this is the strongest of all points because this is something that can put you out because if you don't speak about your skill, who will know about it? If you don't talk to people, who would you say can refer me to this job in case I get laid off? So make sure you build your social capital through networking as much as you can. And then third, uh, fourth, I mean, uh, showcase your skills to the world. Write those blog posts, do not fear. Have the audacity to talk to people. Have the audacity to slide into people's DMs on LinkedIn. Tell them, I'm, I've done this, I've done that. Are you willing to look at it? Just give them a caveat and see what they respond. The worst that can happen is just getting a no. You can even send 100 in a day and get like 10 responses or five. That's a really, really positive. That's going to be really positive feedback for you. Um, showcasing your skills puts you um, above competition, gives you a competitive edge. Make sure you do this, make sure you put it to the test. Have a strategy where you can just try all this in the next, like, let's say, just try it for even two months. If it doesn't work, come back to me and tell me, Oi, you, lied to, you lied to me or you didn't tell me the truth. But I, I guarantee you, if you do this, if you are consistent enough, if you are able to practice, if you're able to find your purpose, if you're able to build social capital through networking, I guarantee you, you're going to get to the place that you desire. You're going to be able, this is all going to give you leverage over the opportunities you desire, online or offline in technology, online or on site or physical, I assure you. Um, so with that, I think you are good to go. Now you can hit that launch button and just 
go and conquer the world. So I think I'm done with my presentation. So now I'm going to go into Q&A session. I think I'd hand it over back to you, Hope, so that you can moderate that as you continue. Thank you so much. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Gerald. That's amazing. Um, questions? We have about six minutes. Anyone with a question? Yes, uh, Michael, you can go ahead. A question or comment? Uh, thank you for this. Uh, mine is just a question uh, regarding the different events. I know you mentioned one way we can find events and hackathons that we can attend. But like, is there, um, are there any other spaces that you can suggest where we can find these uh, these events that we can attend? Yeah, thank you, Michael. That's a very good question. So um, I think I usually say if you go looking for something, you'll find it regardless of where you're going to get it. It doesn't have to be only on uh, on the sites like uh, Eventsbrite. You can even stumble upon someone posting at such an event on, let's say, Instagram. There's a lady called Diram.tech. She posts even as 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 recent as today, she posts all the communities that are there in Nairobi for tech enthusiasts. It doesn't have to be only on Eventbrite or you can even find them through your schools. Um, I'm not sure about all the schools, but I know of some schools which have um, uh, what like like call them like uh, dev clubs or cyber security clubs or tech clubs where you can find this opportunity through the officials of such groups. So I think if it's not there, then I think it's up to you to create it and help other people get such opportunities. Um, thirdly, uh, I'd say LinkedIn also helps you to get uh, such opportunities and spaces. There are a lot of groups on LinkedIn. There are, I think there are also groups, no, there are no groups on, I'm not sure on Twitter, but I think there are groups on LinkedIn where you can actively get these communities. Even you can talk to someone. Um, you can search it on LinkedIn and probably find a trail of results and then narrow that story and find opportunities which are available. But um, I think for me, what worked most was the Eventbrite's events bright site, which, and also a friend of mine who used to update me and tell me, hey, there's uh, such an event, connect with this person, and then you connect with them on LinkedIn, and then next time an event comes up, you have the notifications on, it pops up, it, it pops up, and then uh, you, get an, you get a notification and you are able to RSVP and go. So I think those are some of the strategies which I have put in place and they have worked for me as far as looking for these communities and events are concerned. Yeah. Uh, just to add on to that, Michael, I think those who joined the, com the Cyber Shuja community earlier, I know there are those who are just joining. Um, what's his name? One of our trainers, Neville, posted a CTF that is going on and they were looking for groups. So I don't know if it's still open, but those are some of the opportunities Gerald is talking about. So if you have a CTF group, or even if there's a group of people who are really advanced in CTF and they have an opening, it's something I used to do in campus. You just join in, even if you're not that experienced in it, you end up learning on the way. Yeah. So, Stephen? Stephen, you can go ahead and talk and ask your question. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank, Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Gerald, for that uh, inspiteful session and uh, a very detailed uh, session because I've got to learn much about networking in a, an aspect of which I can say I've been struggling a bit and uh, with the things that you have said, I think I'll apply them from tomorrow. But uh, I have a question, Gerald. How do you get to how did you get to use this? Uh, how did you get to interact with maybe let me call them Twitter celebrities or some some of these guy posts as celebrities? So you can get uh, some form some form of fear to interact with them or get on a personal level creating a rapport with them because you don't know what he or she may tell you so on an aspect of um, interacting with people who are renowned 
I don't want to mention names. Yeah, yeah. I know some of them, you know them, but I don't want to mention names. These guys, some of them, you, you say create a rapport, but the way a person or the way you perceive a person may be true or may, may be false. So how do you overcome that? So yeah, I think that's uh, a bit of, I can feel a bit of an imposter syndrome Kidogo back there. But what I'd say and what has worked for me in the past, it's something that I also had, something that I've been grooming, uh, I've been like polishing up on that. So I think you just have to have the audacity. And the worst that these people can say is just a no or just put you off. That's the worst thing that can happen. And funny enough, that builds your confidence to talk to these people. And what you have, probably what you, the picture that you have of them in your head is, might be quite the opposite. I'm telling you this from personal experience. I, I find someone on LinkedIn or Twitter, talk to them, and then when we meet at, a, at an event, like, this is a cool guy. Doesn't have even a lot of, just a cool guy, very willing to talk. So I think it's about uh, putting off that perception and trying to find out who this person is, trying to just assessing how they speak, how they hold conversations, and then just trying to flow with it. But um, on these guys who you are calling celebrities, mind you, there were people like you at one point in time. So if they do not relate to you being someone who's coming up or someone who's trying to find their way in this uh, industry and resonate with that and see themselves in that particular, in that picture, then that's, a, that's someone who you're not supposed to be entering that even someone who, like a mentor you're supposed to look up to. That person does, is, those are people we call gatekeepers in brackets. They don't want to see other people come up. They don't want to see other people flourish. But if you dare just to talk to these people, just have the audacity to talk to them, just the worst thing they can say is a no, or just put it off. And that's supposed to build your confidence. That's supposed to help even build your own social skills. Because Ukiambio Apana, if you're told no, that's not the end of life. You move on to the next person, you're like, hey, this, 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 and this. And then if they help you now, you're able even to throw the conversation smoothly. You're able to resolve it to this person. This person is even able to give you an opportunity to mentor you. So for me, that's, I'm telling you this out of practical experience. That's what I've been doing. Really, that's what has worked for me. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, uh, Stephen, I hope you've heard that. And just to add to that, when you're going for this event, do a background study on, it sounds creepy, but do a background study on those who are speaking. Uh, have conversations. The issue is, I think past, part of imposter syndrome comes from showing up to those events and you don't know what to talk about. You don't know how to put yourself out there. So just do a background study on what, these people have done and then build interest in that so that then when you're introducing yourself you have something to talk about um i'll take ike then rose and lastly victor kindly i'll just take those three and then gerald allow me to say your linkedin is open for dms <laughs> yeah no it's no reason i'm here to help with it. okay so ike you can go ahead thank you Am I audible? Yeah, I am. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, for commenting you. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. I've learned a lot. Okay. So I'm going to build on my networking skills and the social skills. From, uh, from now, I'm going to write a, a strategy. And uh, yeah, I know once I do that, I'll progress. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ike. Rose? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you for the session. So my first, um, not really a question, but could you please clarify on the, I don't know if it's a lady, you referred to something, DRAM.tech. I was not able to get that profile. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's yeah, it's, I spelled it's it wrong. D, it's D I, it's D, let me just try write it down. D I R H A M dot tech. 
that should be it. Let me just have a quick check. But that that uh, that's her profile. She posts a lot of tech events in Nairobi. Um, ones which you might not even see someone elected. Some even which might not believe that they exist. But um, she posts a lot of communities, and I think yeah, you can learn to you can learn about two three communities from her profile. You can join actually two three communities. From her profile. Uh, she's on Twitter or LinkedIn. She's on Instagram, funny enough. I know her from Instagram. Oh, uh, that's why. Okay, okay. She, uh, a, so my other question is, mm, sorry. She's a social engineer. Yeah, yeah, I can see all of it. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll check. Thank you. Um, my other question is, uh, you said you're being practical. Can you at least give us how long uh, did it take you for this to work? Is it five years, two years? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I started exposed, getting exposed to, let's say, cybersecurity because I had a career shift from cybersecurity to design. These are different. One coincide, the other coincide. So what I did was try to get exposure as early as possible while still in school. So by the time I think I was in second year or third year, I'd already started going into a company. So for cybersecurity, I was there for around two years. Two years, three years, actively looking at um, cybersecurity, practicing around two, two, three years. Then I decided to move into to I decided to move to design because I felt my passion and my purpose was more inclined towards that side. So, as I said earlier, for the experience is different for everyone. It it it's it's I, I don't want to say it's tailor made, but it's different for everyone. Someone might take a year, someone, another person may take a month, another person may take two months, another person may take three years, another person may take five years. So it's, but to just give you hope, it's very dependent on your competence, on your skill, and how you network, those three things. It's very, very dependent on those things. Those things can, if you are able to um, be strong in all three or two, or just have an, a good balance, then I think it should take you lesser time. To break into the field, into the into the into the field of to the room which you desire to the that opportunity. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Victor, the last one. Victor, you can go ahead. So, um, good evening. My name is Victor, and uh, that was a great session. Really enjoyed, and also I've learned a lot. Um, uh my question my question was uh at some point you mentioned um, you mentioned about a tool that compares uh, your cv to the job requirements um I, I didn't get that quite clearly yeah it's called job scan job scan okay okay, okay. it's called job scan. yeah yeah thanks uh mine was just to say thank you it was a great session i've learned a lot and that's all thank you so much really happy and, and also, I think I'll keep in touch with Hope. Uh, I'm really, really big on resources. I usually do a lot of hunting for resources. Currently, I'm building uh, a Notion site with resources, but that's for design. But I can do separate ones for those who are actively job hunting for remote jobs and some of the strategies which you can use. Um, I'm going to share that with Hope as time, time goes by, let's say like in the next one month. One month I should be done with it because it needs some time to um, bring all together. But I'm really big on resources. I can couple up, I can bundle up all that in one notion file and then share it for you guys to use. Okay, so I know there are a number of questions, but just allow me to close it there. Gerald's LinkedIn is open. Uh, if you're seeking mentorship, go ahead and just contact him. If you have any pressing questions, I'll also advise you to just go ahead and contact him directly via LinkedIn. So just as we come to the end of this session, thank you, Gerald, for taking us through the wide tech landscape that is there, uh, how to keep up and all that. I know it can get quite overwhelming. You may find that one point you're running towards AI, the next you're running towards um, red teaming. You know, there's so much that is out there. So. Thank you for also taking us through the opportunity, knowing what opportunity fits you best. I think something very important I've picked up is 
it doesn't at times when you're starting off you run towards where the money is but the passion is what sustains you the passion is what puts your head in the field the passion is what pushes your growth so as much as you are looking for opportunities out there try to get your to passion it on in and how do you do this try try and try try different aspects uh build skills in different areas if you have an interest in ai try that if you have an interest in governance and risk try that just try different places and see where you lie when you're starting off um you may not know where exactly you're supposed to fit in but then by practicing different areas then you get a feel of where you're supposed to be then also thank you for taking us through networking i think he's really really been persistent on the need for networking network and network go to events learn to speak to the people out there and sometimes even when you don't know how to approach or speak like when you're in hackathons your work will speak for you so build those tools put your skills out there be your biggest psych buster in simple words and finally um it's time for you to go and just try all this put yourself out there and all that we've been told so thank you so much gerald uh it's it's such an honor to have you on board and see the kind i think i've been following through linkedin it's why i actually invited him he's taken up some big opportunities in tech out there and yeah it's proud to ha- i'm proud to have you in this session so thank you everyone and thank you gerald again for being with us okay, okay.